It's time to say goodbye to humanity. Welcome to the new norm. I am from Newmarket. The last time I interviewed- Oh my gosh. Yes, we talked about how we were born in the very same hospital. So it's very nice to see you again. That's right. Um, I wanted to talk to you. I know everybody's probably asking you about the stash, but I think- Did you find out if it was the same room yet? It might've been. Born in? Yeah, I'm hoping it was. Yeah. I guess some of that Jim Carrey energy. Um, The stash, I think this could be the first film that a stash had a slow-mo. I know it's incredible, right? Yeah. The mustache to me is a outward manifestation of pure evil and ego. You know, it's like a midlife crisis of its own. You know, <laughs> it's like a, buying a sports car at fifty-five. You know what I mean? <laughs> what what car equivalent is it? Is it like a Lamborghini? Is it a, 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 a... I think it was an early Uber. <laughs> It was so good. But I heard you thought that it wasn't actually big enough. Uh, number one, are we yes. going to go bigger in the next film? Do you have any ideas for where you will go with the next one? And how do you achieve the perfect stash? And when you shoot that slow-mo, do you like do you sort of tweak it knowing it's going to be a slow-mo? Well, no one can say what the future holds. But I but I uh, I, I lobbied constantly to make the, the mustache bigger. I, I literally wanted it to leave frame on both sides, you know? I wanted, I wanted it to be leaving frame on both sides and then it would start to move up and down and you'd realize that it's, as the camera widened out that it's become a seesaw and Sonic's on one end <laughs> and Knuckles is on the other. You need to have a remote control guy in the next one that like That's can right. move, it, move it up and down and sideways Incredible. and the whole, and the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. Um, as a Canadian, I appreciated the kilometers to miles joke. I don't yes. know if that was an improvised, but thank you for that. Yeah, that I was, uh, that was a last of- minute ad for sure. Well, I wanted to ask you about that because obviously you have- a I'm big- always reaching out psychically. There you go. Canada. <laughs> but you obviously, you know, you have a bigger role in this film you have a different character arc. Can you sort of talk about like how much Jim Carrey is on the cutting room floor? Like how much free reign did you get to just go and go and go? I know you said you you would go all night if you could and keep going. It's like a wonderful relationship that eventually breaks your heart. You know what I mean? It's just like fantastic creativity and amazing output. And I carpet bomb. I just come in with so much stuff. And I just, uh, I never leave myself alone. By the end of the movie, I'm so exhausted. I never want to work again. And what happens is to every hundred ideas I give them or I practice or I, or I play around with, you know, 10 stay in the movie and, you know, or five, two of them are something that you might never have seen before, you know? So that's how I work. I just literally throw everything in the kitchen sink at it. And, and uh, inevitably, I'm heartbroken about some things that aren't going to be in the movie, you know? Really? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, like, what, like, yeah. Yeah, like the word numinal ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis. I've been trying to get that in both movies. And so far, it hasn't made it into the movie. You know, it's a lung disease. <laughs> Maybe third time's a charm. Who knows? Yeah. Keep, keep at it. You never, you never know, yeah. right? But yeah. is there, what was the moment on the... Au contraire, my frère, the one that actually did make it in the movie that you were super happy about. Yeah, that's my French lessons uh, when I was growing up in Canada. It was, wasn't that's it? All, that's all that stayed. <laughs> that and c'est le garage de Paul. Oui, c'est le garage de Paul. Oui, le garage de Paul. Uh, ça va? Oui, ça va très bien. Merci et vous? Bonhomme, bonhomme, c'est tout joué. Bonhomme, bonhomme, c'est tout joué. That's something. For I know that one. Audience. Yeah. I right? know that one. You oh. know, Mr. Muggs. I do. Right? Mr. Muggs goes to the moon. Did they teach you that in school? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. I learned to read reading Mr. Muggs goes to the moon. Um, The fans of this, I mean, you've obviously had fans your whole career, but can you sort of talk about, were you surprised at how people reacted to the first one and how they're already reacting? I know I tweeted a reaction. I love the second one. Were you surprised at how much fan outreach and what is the sonic community like and different from maybe other fan, other films you've worked on well gamers love their games and if you if you hit it right it's they they love you forever i mean they 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 don't give up what they love you know so and, and if you do it wrong they'll tell you so real quick yeah <laughs> you know yeah. they're very passionate about it because it's a part of them you know it's a, like a 
part of their DNA, you know, when they get attached to these games. It's kind of a different universe and it's a little bit of a responsibility, but uh, I have undying faith in uh, the creative process and that if my heart's coming from the right place that I more, more often than not will hit the same place in them. And, uh, and that's kind of how I operate, you know? It's like, you know, there's no denying joy, you know, and if I have joy when I'm doing it, it's going to translate. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to grab them because they, they want it. Yeah. Um, Robotnik at the very beginning of this film is banished to mushroom planet. Yes. You can only eat and drink mushrooms. If you, Jim Carrey could only eat one food, if you were banished to a planet, you could only eat one food for the rest of your life. What would it be? Grilled cheese sandwiches. That's a great answer. Yeah, grilled cheese sandwiches dipped in ketchup. Yeah. Or ketchup chips, which is uniquely Canadian. <laughs> ketchup chips. Here, let me see what else. What else is Canadian that we can't get down here? A crunchy chocolate bars. Um, a Big Turk. Big Turk is an amazing chocolate bar. Uh, and uh, let me see. Uh, but, you know, the thing about the mushroom planet is he, he, he obviously sustained life on the mushroom planet, but he, he obviously didn't find the right kind of mushrooms because if he had, he would have stayed there. <laughs> that is true. That you is know? true. Um, uh, I think there must have been a scene, and I'm not spoiling anything because it was in the trailer, where, where did you do wire work in this film? Because you're yes. sort of like projected. Can you talk yes, about when you get your superpowers sort of exploring those moments and being on a wire. What does Jim Carrey on a wire look like as he's filming? Miserable. <laughs> uh, you know, it's one of those things where the way they shot, they put a psych behind me and they projected things onto it. It wasn't going to be the finished product, but they really gave me something that gave me the idea of the energy of the piece, right? And I was kind of inside a crude version of the mech head. So I could see kind of where I was and what I was doing. At first, it was just going to be him standing at a podium or, or uh, sitting in a chair. And I said, no, he's quantum at this point. He doesn't need to sit or stand. He's going to be, we, we got to suspend him in midair. He's got to be suspended by the power of the Tesla coils and, uh, and controlling this thing with his mind, his voice, and his body, you know, and all of it is connected. He's now one with the machine. You know, and that was a blast. So I knew what it, I knew it was going to be something super cool in the end. So that helped me endure the uh, crushing of my genitalia. <laughs> and took, that's where I'm being wrapped. Yeah, that's the best. Yeah. Sorry. Didn't mean well, to be, I didn't mean to be crude, but that's just the scientific truth. <laughs> you remain a yeah, national There will treasure. be no more children. Remain a national treasure. Thank I just you. love chatting with you. Congratulations. Well, I love the nation that I am a treasure to. Thank you. <laughs> Bad time to say this, but I don't actually have a plan. Hey, you got a little something on your. Uh, so, first, I wanted to ask you a very hard hitting question. At the very beginning of this movie, Robotnik is stuck on Mushroom Island. He can only eat, drink, sleep. Mushrooms, if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, which food would you choose? Sushi. Ooh, very interesting. Really? I would say yeah. if there's no repercussions, I would say cheeseburgers. If there's no repercussions of how much I'm eating and also no earth repercussions of eating cheeseburgers. It's not a magic cheeseburger island. <laughs> that would be a magic cheeseburger if you want no repercussions. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, true. I mean, you'd be by yourself. You would just be, you know, ensconced in cheeseburgers. Um, great answers, by the way. Um, so obviously you both go on sort of your own journey in this film, but you are still the most iconic duo. You're so good together. Where do you both think the characters fit in in the pantheon of great buddies in the history of film? Where would you wow. rank them? And what yeah. do you think they're sort of similar to? Mm. Oh, there's Mike and Sully and Monsters Inc. Mike you and Sully is a great one. Yeah, Mel Gibson and Danny Glover and Lethal Weapon. Very different one. Got, uh, uh, Harry and Lloyd and Dumb and Dumber. That's a Lloyd, incredible Dumb one to Dumber. punch. I guess I mean, listen, Tom, Tom and Sonic have to be in the upper one thousand buddies of all time. <laughs> from, from, have to be <laughs> in the ranking. Your safe bet. I think so, right? Yeah. 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 Pick a specific number. Are we going 999 or are we going low hundreds? I'm going, I'm gonna go, oh, I'm gonna go 463. 
<laughs> okay. Okay. What about you, James? I'm going to say it's, I'm going to give us a little more credit. Say we're in the 300s. Wow. I like wow. that. Wow. That's good. I can um, see so there. That's a good one. That's a good one. I would give you, I would do even better. Um, Aww, so obviously fans love this franchise. Fans are so excited. I tweeted a reaction to this film and I can't believe how the love I got for you. Uh, are you shocked by the love still that fans, what has been like a favorite sort of moment and like even this film, people are already so hyped for it and loving it. I mean, I love that the, you know, the, the whole redesign thing on the first film, right? Like they, that said a lot when when um, Jeff, the director was like, you know, and I think it was a whole, uh, a lot of us, but we listened to the fans and it was one of those moments where they felt really heard and seen. And um, I don't know, I, I, I'm very proud of the movie. I think the movie is a, a, a terrific film, but I, I think that that actually carried a lot of weight. And, um, and it was not lost on us this time around to get that right as well. You know, you want to cater to the fans and you want to figure out a way of also, you know, bringing Sonic to people who've never played the game or don't know who he is. Right. Um, but um, but yeah, I think that was an important thing. And and one of the reasons why I think it's doing as well as it has. I think one of the one of the most exciting things was we got to drop in on some audiences, which is very, very exciting. And when Tails was revealed in that first movie, to watch the audience go crazy, like a Marvel movie just had a reveal at the end segment was so cool because you're like, oh, they not only have, do they care about it, but they like want more and they love these characters. There's so much more we can play with here. But uh, the fans reacting has been so lovely. There's even like videos of people online watching the trailer for the first time and getting so excited. And you just feel lucky to be a part of that world. Trademark Little Mermaid. <laughs> it's so cool. It's actually really cool. It's, it's nice to have love in the world. Yeah, <laughs> so there's enough of the rest of it, right? Um, speaking of tales, Ben, yeah. how did you, because I know you and Colleen actually got to film together. You got to do a lot of virtual stuff. I don't know if you worked with Idris as well, um, but sort of how did you develop that chemistry together? Um, and how did you make sure you got that relationship right? Yes. So Colleen is obviously a super pro at VO. She's yeah. done a billion different voiceover roles. She's an unbelievable human and actress. And uh, for me, it was just, we wanted to get on a Zoom together and record the first couple of scenes. So there's like a, uh, like, um, a, a bar type scene that we did together. And the whole idea is for her to kind of feel what the, what the feeling is in this movie, because she's done so many different iterations of, of tales and how it works out. And then also to see how we play together and how we can joke around and how we can build on the relationship. And it was so lovely to be able to do that with her because we really are a team uh, in this movie. We're like teammates. So she was incredible. And then I haven't gotten to do anything with Idris yet, which is kind of amazing because we're kind of like against each other. So it makes even right. more sense. But I it's love like, that. Um, that you're like, <laughs> we're like this. This is how this is us fighting in the movie. It's like us fighting in the movie. Um, so it's been it's been very, very, very exciting. And watching him prove how good of a voiceover actor he is is pretty right. remarkable because you could be a good actor and be a terrible voiceover actor, but he's good at both. And then James, the last time I talked to you for the first one, I said, you're the best tennis ball actor in the business because I always believe that you're really talking to Sonic. It continued in this one. I'm always looking. I'm always looking to see if, you know, every actor, if they get it wrong or they, or, or they get it right. But I wanted to ask you, like, when you're picturing, when you're looking at the tennis ball and you're looking, are you actually picturing Sonic? Do you ever picture yeah. Ben? Do you yeah. ever see Ben? Does he yeah, see I picture picture, consciousness? I do picture you sometimes. I do. Because, the, I mean... Sitting here with Ben, it's like obviously he brings so much of his own, you know, magnetic uh, personality wow. to the character. But um, I mean, we saw this video game character come to life through Ben. And so when I do those scenes, I imagine I hear his voice. I see him sometimes if I, you know, especially if I'm sitting there, there's different iterations. Like sometimes it's a piece of tape. Sometimes it's a tennis ball. Sometimes it's a right. uh, like a stuffed animal. And the stuffed animal, it's hard to hear your voice if I'm looking at the tape. Okay. But if I hear this, if I see the stuffed animal, you know, I, I, I hear Ben's voice in my head and I was always really a stickler for the, the technical. I liked the challenge of it. I didn't, yeah. want, I, I was always like, I'm not going to just be staring at this in this direction because yeah. I see so many of these movies. I have three kids and it bothers me. It sort of takes me out of the movie when it's not, it doesn't really look like you're looking at him. So there's this thing called triangulation where if he's closer, of course, your eyes are doing this instead of that. And I, I really wanted to make sure that that was right. Um, and, and then it just felt like you're talking to Ben. It shouldn't yeah. feel like you're talking to, you know, an animated hedgehog. It should just feel like you're talking to a pal. Mm. So um, I've counted, I actually counted eight before, but now I think there's nine duos in this film. There's so many good duos. Like 
you know, you've got Sonic Tail, Tom, Sonic and Tails, Robotnik and Stone, Robotnik and Knuckles. I'm not going to list them all, but who do you both think is the best duo in this film? You're going to have mixed emotions, maybe. About oh, this I mean, it's cool to see Natasha and Tika have their I little like, love that scene. action sequence in this one. And that was that. Was I agree. Fun. I think James nailed it on the yeah. head. Yeah, that scene is amazing. They're both incredible. And Natasha is an action star. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, now that you're both Sonic, Sonic aficionados, next film, who would you like to see a crossover with? What video game crossover would you love to see in Sonic numero three? We could pick any video game? Yes. Oh my goodness, this would be exciting. That's interesting. I would love if there was a way to introduce a character that's in a video game called Smash Brothers because then all of us can have big epic fights with each other. So I'm going to say like uh, um, Mega Man or something like that. Yes. Or like um, uh, that would be really fun or like um, Donkey Kong. I mean, it would be crazy if someone just was there. Like you're like, what? <laughs> Donkey Kong would be amazing, oh, even though it's Nintendo, but that'd be amazing. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Pitfall. The guy from Pitfall oh, yeah, just, people fly, just from flying Pitfall. through. <laughs> <laughs> It'd also be fun to see Cyclops from X-Men in it. Pitiful. Who are you? Where are my manners? Sonic, meet Knuckles. I love that I get to talk to you the week that this movie comes out because a lot of Sonic fans have already seen this movie. Critics have seen this movie. They're talking about how funny you are in this. You're a scene stealer. Are you like, whoo, because this is not, you know, <laughs> it's a big character. 100%. The pressure <laughs> was on, you know, the pressure <laughs> was on. I'm not joking. The first movie is great, right? The first movie. And then, you know, the sequels have to live up to the first movie, but not to mention, introducing a beloved character that everyone wants to be like, okay, he better be good. So, whew, thank you. I'm really pleased that the fans, literally the Sonic fans are sort of responding well to it. I'm really happy about that. Yeah, no, I can imagine. Now it's my understanding, cause I heard you talk about this in another interview that when you were actually in the recording booth, I want to break this down a little bit, that to sort of get the cadence right, you were reading other people's parts. Like you were maybe reading the lines of Sonic and then you were reading your own parts. Are you doing that in the Sonic voice? Are you doing it in your own voice? Feel free to demonstrate. I wouldn't be mad at you. <laughs> Feel free to demonstrate. No, uh, you don't <laughs> want to see that. But no, just to get like, you know, the back and forth, because obviously all of it was shot in piecemeal. You know, the live action was shot. Ben's uh, performance was recorded separately and mine too. So it was all put together as a jigsaw. And sometimes just to get that interaction, I would be like, Sonic will say, you, for someone, you know, I'm, now I'm now I'm actually going to do it for you. He's like, for someone called Knuckles, you sure are a bad puncher. And then I'm like, Rrr! and so, <laughs> you know, I just need to hear myself do it or hear what it might sound like to just, you know, land yeah. the timing properly. Uh, but please do not repeat that impression of Ben Schwartz. He's terrible. <laughs> You made my week. That was incredible, actually. You're a very good Sonic. You're a great Knuckles. You're a very good Sonic, too. I did um, try Knuckles in a high-pitched voice, and they didn't go for that. Can you imagine? No, I heard about this. So how many voices did you actually try? Like, was there just sort of a couple iterations? Or how many do you go through? Are you walking around the house trying different things? Is your family like, what's happening right now? What's going on here? Who are you talking to? I'm not talking to anyone. I would... I would do that in the initial stages. And then when we got into the room and we discussed it, you know, three or four different voices, but the high pitched one, you know, that didn't go down well. You know, they were like, no way are you doing that boy. So, you know, we quickly moved on and got to where we are now. But that's fun. It's fun to try different things. I know I, I did at one point, I, I auditioned for voice overs and I know you learn that you have voices in you that you didn't know you had. Like how many have you sort of locked away for other roles down the road? Oh, like I have a nice little catalog of different voices and, and accents and cadences. Cadences is my thing, you know, like with Sonic, I mean, with Sonic, he's like a motor mouth, right? He speaks very quickly. He can say it all in one, but with uh, Knuckles, we loved that he was so stoic. So, you know, yeah, you know, dump, 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 dump. and I enjoyed playing that. Yeah, no, you could tell the joy. The joy came through the screen. It like leapt yeah. off the screen. Um, I don't know how much um gaming you've done in your life, but do you know what a cheat code is? Yes, I do. 
Yes, I've done quite a bit of gaming. I, I, you I, have. I'm a gamer. Yeah. If I gave you a cheat code in life, and for people who don't know what it is, it can unlock powers. You could be a different character for a day or for a period of time or whatever. What would you use your cheat code for in life? My cheat code would uh, be to teleport. I would I like and end up somewhere else. I don't know what the noise was. The it's kind of like the me me mechanisms of the cheat code working, but that's what I would do is to be able to teleport. How many weird voices actually reminded me of something? How many weird sort of sound effects do you have to do when you're recording? Because I know you've recorded many, you know, you've done voice work many times in the past. How many times are you just like grunting, doing like weird stuff <laughs> where you just sort yeah. of have to create these like sound effects that, especially for a video game character? Yeah, you do. I mean, like in the sequence of a voiceover session, you do the voiceover work, the, the lines, and then you do the the grunt work. So like if you're getting hit, uh, 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 you do that little section and then you do the loud ones because you lose your voice. If you do the loud ones first, you can't do your lines. So that's the sequence. But the crazy thing is when you're doing the fight sequence stuff to get the right sound, you know, like, uh, you know, try it. Uh, uh. Yeah, that's getting punched <laughs> in the stomach. Yeah, do it. Do like, it, uh, do that it, wasn't very good. Yeah, it was okay. It wasn't a hard <laughs> hit. That was a real hard hit. This one. Uh, uh. Yeah, there you go. I <laughs> know yeah, you feel silly, right? But you have to do that a million times. Yeah, Idris, one more, please. Just a little more uh, and a little less. Uh. Now I can say that Idris Elba has directed me. I'm very excited about that. Um, yeah. Congratulations. I know there's going to be a TV series. What is the vibe of the series or what do you hope the vibe of the series is going to be? Wow. Okay. So um, first of all, um, uh, the TV show is too early to say at the moment. I'm, uh, I'm, I don't know what they're planning, but my understanding is that, you know, like Knuckles is a fish out of water. You know, he's kind of like, he's like a traveler <laughs> and England and England, in, the world is, is like, wow, this is quite of interesting. So I kind of like him, you know, going to different restaurants and tasting food and, you know, tr doing touristy things. I just want to see Knuckles at, you know, Statue of Liberty going, what is this? You know what I mean? That's what I think. But I think they'll have more adventures than that. I think I heard that you, when you were doing some of your recordings, that you actually already saw, Jim's performance was already in the can. And yeah. you sort of, did you get to sort of watch it in its entirety? Or are you watching it and then feeding off of like lines in the moment with Jim? Because that must have been cool. Yeah, to we took it that. apart. We dissected it. I didn't watch the whole thing. I just took it apart. And we just, you know, circulated a scene because it's quite, it's, you know, obviously movie magic and editing and all of that, but you do have to get a sense that they're in the same room. So I got watch it. And I was always interested in who was reading my lines to Jim Carrey. You know, I was always interested in who that guy was and what that was. But in, in any case, I never really got to listen to that. And then I would fill in the blanks. So... It's quite, it's quite interesting because I love Jim Carrey. I really wanted to work with him, but uh, eh. Hope I'm not too late. I'm sorry, who are you? Name's Tails. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. Step one, light taunting. Step two, I have no idea. I know we saw Tails at the end of the first Sonic. But yes. when you got the call and you were, they were like, you're gonna play Tails, were you like, <sighs> I mean, you've played this character for so many years on TV and in the games. I know. It was more of like, really? <laughs> you were like, it better be me if it's not me. <laughs> no, well, I mean, as a voice actor, you don't expect it. You know, we get replaced so often by celebrities. So well, that, that I got to do this movie, I was thrilled. It's just so, so very excited. So Tails, I mean, everybody who loves the games loves Tails. They love that relationship between Tails and Sonic. But after playing this character for so many years, who is Tails to you? Like, I know what Tails means to fans, but who, how have you personally connected with Tails? He's the best, best friend you're ever going to have. He's so smart. He's so dear. He's loyal. He's got, um, you know, he's got energy. He's, and he's going to be there for you no matter what. Did you have any, did you, were you and Ben able to have conversations before you started filming and sort of build the chemistry? No, no. No, we did get to work together, but we didn't have any contact beforehand. So we just, you know, 
throw you in the pool and see what, you know, but it was, it was so wonderful. He's such a, you know, he's such a great actor. He's so funny. He has such an extensive improv background and I have a fair amount of improv background as well. So working off of him was, it was easy and, and wonderful. And the, you know, the relationship really went from there. So you did shoot a lot of scenes together. You were able to be like in the voice recording booth together and do a lot of that. We were doing it virtually. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Because you don't often get that, right? So that must change the dynamic for you. Like what do do you think? Because people just love him as Sonic. He's like the perfect Sonic. So sort of, can you talk about like why you feel he's the perfect Sonic and sort of working opposite him? What did he bring that kind of, you know, maybe you hadn't explored before? He has so much energy. Let's just start with that. And like, you know, Sonic is his thing is speed and Ben, you know, he's a fast talker too. And so it just, it just works. You know, he, I think he is Sonic (laughs) seriously. And I, you know, the, like I said, you know, the funny and like having all the improv background and it just, it just works. Like he is, he's really perfect to play this role. Can you maybe tell me like, what was a moment or a, uh, in sort of like your virtual sessions that kind of stands out that was like oh this I'm going to take this one away with me and lock that memory up oh all of it but um the scene in Siberia was such a blast I mean they really kind of let us you know we we did the you know we stuck to the script and then they kind of just let us go and to have that give and take with him was fantastic I mean it really was so 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 much fun um it was just it was brilliant it was fantastic I think it might be my favorite scene in the movie it's so funny. It's, yeah, because it's also like a, you know, it's a, it takes you out, like there's so much going on, but then it's yeah. sort of like that moment of comic relief. Like they had that in the first one and this is yeah. sort of like, they've, they've, they've upped the ante. So you've, you've voiced another Sonic character in the past, Charmy B. Yes. Would you like to see Charmy B in the next Sonic movie? Would you like to sort of maybe play both? That would be fantastic. I never even thought of that. That would be great. Yeah, I would love that. That would be so interesting because he's a, in a similar range-ish to tail. So I'd have to kind right. of really concentrate. <laughs> I'd have yeah. to really think clearly about their characters and, and where they would be headed. Yeah. Really? So you have yeah. to like differentiate like in your mind, because I'm wondering yeah. for you, like when you first, if you can go back to like the first time you played this character. How do you, cause there's so much charm. There's so much love. How did you find the voice in the beginning? Like how long did that take? And then for this film, can you sort of jump back into it or is it, do you really have to sort of warm up to it? I can jump back in. I, for whatever reason, Tails is just this piece of me that I can find. Um, initially I'm really, I'm a visual person. So for me, when I approach any new character, it helps me to have a picture. Um, so I, I look at him and, and then I give him what, what my interpretation is. And also they'll give me a character description. So from what they've given me and the picture, then I come up with what I think the character sounds like and who that character is. And then as you work on it with a director and whatever given situation that the character is in, the character develops over time. So I'm sure if you listen to the first episode of Sonic Boom and like the most recent video game, it probably sounds a little bit different because of the progression that the character has taken. And also this movie, same thing. So how many iterations of the voice do you think you did before you sort of arrived on like the final? Not many. I think it's just, it's more of like an evolution that you don't really yeah. notice. Like I didn't do anything consciously to change it. It's more about like, you know, his maturity level or his um, groundedness or whatever situation that he's in. Yeah. What did you, um, because you have played this character in different iterations, doing a film where you're playing this character, what sort of aspects of tales did you get to explore that you hadn't gotten to do before? So since it's the beginning of the relationship with Sonic, um, very much this like fanboy, um, you know, Sonic is his idol. You know, he definitely doesn't see them as equals. Um, whereas in the past, they were they were certainly closer to equals. I mean, he's always been considered the sidekick, but their friendship had been so solidly established that I don't think he felt, you know, lesser. And not that he feels lesser. He's just like, he's so in awe of him and that's his idol, you know? Um, and that Sonic would take him in and consider him a friend is just thrilling for him. You know, he can't believe it. Like Sonic the Hedgehog is going to be my BFF. What? Like, that's crazy to him. You know? 
So fans, obviously, and I just got a little taste of it because I tweeted out a reaction of my love for Sonic 2. And then there was so much fan support. What has been sort of over the years, what is the question fans sort of ask you most? What is the request you get the most? And sort of, is there a moment like a standout moment with fans and how much they love you, your portrayal in this character? Well, let me just start with the Sonic fans are like, they're the best fans in the world and they are true blue fans seriously and no pun intended with the blue but seriously they absolutely love this franchise and the love that they have poured on me has been astonishing and i'm i'm and i'm feeling it in every you know they've been so supportive of me continuing the role they're so excited and i'm so grateful for that they're the best fans in the world um truly i mean they really really are and uh, it's it's been so lovely to see. And so some of the fan moments that have stood out for me, um, we did a convention in New York with the cast of Sonic Boom. And I didn't know as much about this universe then as I do now. I learned so this guy, this kid came up with like an encyclopedia of Sonic and he showed me. And that's when I learned his full name. I'd been, I did recorded an entire season of the show thinking his name was just Tails. And a fan told me his name was Miles Tails Prower. <laughs> I That's know. amazing. Yeah, I'm like, how did you guys not tell me this? What? <laughs> what element yeah. of the games, because obviously you're so familiar with the games, what element of the games that they brought to this film? Because they really made an effort, I think, in the sequel to make it feel more like a video game. What were sort of your favorite elements or Easter eggs that they brought to this one? I don't want to, I want them to be able to find them themselves. Yeah, but, um, yeah. But really keep an eye out in the temple because that is like <laughs> it's like easter egg central um and it was so beautifully done and it, you know like you, it's like being in a video game but not in in a movie and it just made sense the way that they did it, it just was seamless really trust me there will come a moment when your powers will be needed but you don't choose that moment that moment chooses you i just got goosebumps wait a second did you steal that from oprah First of all, I just talked to Jim and he was telling me about just how much he shoots, like how much you sort of let him go with it. He appreciates that. A lot of the actors have expressed that. How many minutes of extra footage are on the cutting room floor of Jim Carrey's performance? Like, could you make a feature length film off of it? Oh, not not quite a feature length, but probably <laughs> definitely a, a mini series. Uh, I mean, it's it's incredible. He, he brings so many ideas to set. He cares so much about getting Robotnik right. Uh, I mean, he calls me on the weekends. We talk through the scenes that, that we'll be filming that week. He has pitches. It's just, it's wow. incredible to have a guy like Jim Carrey who's, who's made so many films. He's, he's done so much, but he still cares so deeply, still shows up, works so hard. Um, and yeah, unfortunately it can't all make the movie, but uh, I have no doubt that we'll find a way for, for fans and audiences to kind of get a look at some of that stuff uh, down the line. He told me twice now, two movies, there's like a, a an amalgamation of words he's strung together. It sounded like supercalifragilisticexpialidocious to me. He says mm -hmm. it hasn't made it in yet. Why has it not made it in yet? Well, because it would add 12 <laughs> minutes to the running length. It's that, it's that long of a word. No, it's the longest word in the English language, I believe. And I've heard it many, many times, and yet I'm not even going to attempt it. I'm not even going to embarrass myself. Uh, yeah, but but again, we we filmed it, we edited it. It's a scene. It's it's hilarious. Uh, so yeah, we'll 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 make sure that it's out there, just so Jim can it. finally put that one to rest. He should not be walking around with that word rattling around his head. <laughs> um, I think what really works about this film, and in so many film franchises, is when the the director truly has a passion for the project that he's working on and a true understanding of it. But what was the challenge? I mean, you're bringing in two beloved characters tails and knuckles and you really it seemed like i mean this the the animation was so incredible in the first one but it feels like you even upped the ante and you made it even better in this one and that's what a lot of fans are saying so sort of from a physical perspective and in more of an emotional getting that balance those relationships right what was the challenge for you bringing those characters to screen Oh, just that it is a much bigger movie and a bigger story, but in all the ways that that I love. I mean, I come from from visual effects in my background. I started my career as a character animator. I love doing an animation. I love working with animators to, to create these performances. So be, being able to bring in Tails and Knuckles and, and of course, Tails, who we teased at the end of the first film to see audiences react so positively. I mean, I was in theaters where kids are literally just yelling at the, at the screen, like it's, you know, the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. I mean, it was incredible and like gave us so much sort of wind in our sails, so much great momentum. And, and we just took that all right into to the sequel and to filming. And, and it, yeah, it just carried us through every step of the way. 
So for those hardcore fans, those true blue Sonic fans, what, uh, give me one Easter egg that you can, we can tease to them that they, you know, from legacy Sonic that they're going to see in this film. Oh, there's so many, honestly. Uh, yeah. My favorite, I'll just tell you what my favorite is. And that's okay. hands down is the, the tornado, the red biplane. Of course, it's all over the place on billboards, on the posters, but it's such an iconic image of Tails flying Sonic into battle on the wing of the, of the red biplane. Uh, that was something just very early on. We knew we have to get this into the movie. It's just going to give fans just goosebumps to see that on the big screen uh, from, you know, almost 30 years ago. I mean, Sonic 2, it's just such a, a, a key, a, just an iconic visual. So, so excited that we were able to do it for this film. What were some of the other things that were so important to you to bring into this? Because this is, like you said, it's a totally new world. Everything's bigger. Everything's bolder. What were sort of some of the elements that, you know, when you were sort of beginning to craft this movie that were the most important to you to bring to this? Oh, just to build on what we'd done in the first film. I mean, that movie was all about Sonic getting, uh, finding a friend, finding a family. We, we ended that movie with a family, right? With Sonic and Tom and Maddie uh, sitting up there in the attic together. And one thing we knew we couldn't lose sight on is, is that was something that really resonated with audiences and families. They really connected to those characters emotionally. So as excited as I was about bringing in new characters and, and, and doing a much bigger movie and, and, and a much bigger story, we had to sort of keep that as our are sort of uh, the foundation you uh, maintain that as just uh, uh knowing how important that was uh, to audiences and then how strongly they responded to that from the first film were you surprised at how excited people were that the poster for the movie looked like the video game cover like people were so excited oh, it's fantastic I, I i i i called our, our marketing team and i was like oh my god i don't know if you guys are doing a print run of this but i need them now like immediately it's such a cool such a cool image Everyone on, on, on the on Paramount side, all the marketing team, they're all fans and you see it, yeah. like you see it in the work and, and everyone loves Sonic, loves this world, loves these movies. And that comes through in, in all the work and all the marketing. And it's just great. I, I just feel like uh, I, I'm so thankful to be a part of this team. Do you look at this film, like as you're building it, do you look at it as part of a trilogy in terms of setting it up? And like, I know they've greenlit the the final or the third Sonic. Do you look at it as a trilogy? And so how are you looking forward into the future of Sonic? I, I don't think we've ever sort of limited ourselves in terms of, oh, this is going to be a three film arc. I think we're just really having a great time going movie to movie. Of course, you can't help but sort of start to, to be thinking about other storylines or characters as you're working on, you know, uh, a, a number two or, or, or as we did in number one. I mean, the image of the Master Armold that's on Sonic's, uh, the map that Long Claw gave him. I mean, we, we purposefully put that in, in, the, in the first movie, having no idea were we going to get to do more movies, but it's like, hey, we'll put this here. We'll seed it. Um, it'll be there if we need it. Uh, and, and we got to we got to take advantage of that. So uh, it's so fun uh, to to sort of imagine where it could go from here. Um, but the, but there isn't a specific trilogy uh, uh, in mind. I guess would be the answer to that question. If you could explore a crossover of Sonic and any other video game, what would it be? Mm. I mean, the, the 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 Smash Brothers thing is kind of amazing. The idea of that we just throw all these video game characters into a battle royale and just see who's there at the end of it. So uh, we've, we, uh, I know Ben uh, has joked about that from time to time, but a Smash Brothers uh, initiative is, is kind of hilarious. These rings signify the commitment. So help me, Thomas. Sorry, sorry. Life or death situation. I need you to use the ring to save me, like right now. No, my God. Oh boy. Ah, uh, Hawaii. I just hope we're not too late. Oh, Lord, there are two of them now. So I'm asking everybody today because in this film, you know, the original film, we obviously had Sonic and Tom. They were a great duo. This film, we have Sonic and Tails. I think the two of you great, make a great duo. You also have your significant others. Who do you both think is the best duo, the number one best duo in this film? And I'm going to tell you what Ben and James said in a second. Ooh. Can we choose ourselves? I mean... <laughs> Okay, great. I was gonna be like, all right here. Yeah, this we, is it. Can we choose ourselves? Yeah. I mean, they say self-love and self-care. That's right. right. Let's let's we're this choosing us. We're choosing us. <laughs> As you absolutely should. And I will tell you that Ben and James also picked the two of you. Oh, oh. 
<laughs> oh my god. god! I love that. Now let, I, I feel bad at picking yourself. <laughs> I don't feel bad. I, I don't go with that energy. No, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> go with that energy. Well, I'm going. This energy right here is amazing, and I know you brought a lot of. You've both done so much improv. You're both great improvers. Did you get to do, it seemed like you got to do more of it in this film. Um, was that the case? And how did it work on the day when you're shooting the portal scene? Because the portal scene is so mm. is such madness. I mean, I feel so lucky uh, when I get to work with the director that gives us room to play. And Jeff is that director. Like we obviously definitely respect the script and get, you know, shots as written, but you know, we come up with ideas in the moment and he really allows us to play. And on that day specifically, we're doing it on a, a very hot day in Hawaii, but we're standing on, you ice. know, ice, snow. the snow machine. So it's like our feet were frozen, but we were hot, but we were hot. <laughs> and then we're also playing around. So it was just the best kind of controlled chaos you can imagine. <laughs> that was like fun. Hawaii. It was so much, I mean, it was so much fun. It was. Oh my God. And then for Tika, for you, anything that you wanted to, because you got to do so much more action in this film and sort of physical, that physical comedy. Yeah, I mean, I got to play with Natasha Rothlo, who is my sister. And so it's it was exciting that we were, you know, used more and used as action figures and, and superheroes and, and not being, um, you know, we weren't the ones who needed the help, right? Uh, and it was exciting to come together and, right. and kick butt. Okay, so if Sonic, Sonic started like failing himself at the beginning of this movie, he calls himself <laughs> a superhero named Blue Justice, if you're giving yourselves a superhero name, what is it? Ooh, um, Maddie the Marker. No, Maddie the Magnificent. There you go. Love it. I, I would be uh, Rachel the Rebel. Ooh, I like this. That's right. That's right. And we're under the Sonic Sirens. Yes, there we go. <laughs> that is our duo, the Sonic Sirens. <laughs> uh, one thing that I thought was really cool, like. Jim Carrey's stash got a slow-mo in this movie. You both got a lot of shots that were, you know, slowed down for the final version, which adds so much to the humor of it. Do you know on the day that what you're filming is going to be a slow-mo? And do you tweak your performance like when you're doing that? Mm. Yes. Luckily, we know because Jeff has such a specific vision for these moments. And for me, it was reminding myself that they're going to slow it down in the edit so I don't have to walk like this in real life. So that was I learned that real quick. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just really cool to see how he added, you know, the texture of that in the final cut. And it yeah. makes it so much more dramatic and funny. Oh my God. Some of my favorite scenes in the movie, like I love a destination movie in general. I love watching a destination movie. It, and then the fact that they added that layer to this film. So because you were both in the first one, can you sort of just compare filming? Cause that must've been a very different filming experience from the it first It was, we around. weren't in the pandemic one for the first one. We were just kind of, you know, talking out loud, I know. seeing each other's faces Sitting on each other. It was great. <laughs> and then the pandemic happened. And, but the great thing that they created, you know, especially Paramount and, and Jeff is like, we were in our own little bubble. Right. And we had great support. The, the crew was incredible. Everybody was being flexible and, um, we had a really good time. We were happy to be working and doing it safely. So mm -hmm. it was definitely very different, but, um, it was play. It was like child's play. Yeah. And I think too, just like, you know, story-wise, I mean, I was tied up for most of the first movie. So I'd go from doing, you know, literally nothing to everything. And but it wasn't nothing. You I mean, made an impact. <laughs> I had a big impact. I yeah. did. I did. I pissed myself. No, I'm good. <laughs> In a chair with my daughter running around. Um, but no, I think what the joy for me was just to see our characters develop and we really yeah. get to see sisterhood on display. Oh, I loved the sisterhood. I thought the sisterhood was absolutely brilliant. Natasha, I know you're also a writer. I'm wondering if you were going to write a crossover film between White Lotus and Sonic. <laughs> How's that going? <laughs> Sonic, <laughs> Sonic meets us at the beach like this. I'm just imagining uh, Jennifer's character, Tanya and Sonic meeting in the spa 
and just her being nonplussed about it. Like she wouldn't even notice that it's an animated character that's, you know, having a cup of tea and getting a massage. Uh, one day, I won't, maybe, maybe I'll write, I'll, I'll work on some other things, but I'll put that on the list. <laughs> Um, can you talk about a little bit about how the Sonic fans have been with you guys? Like Sonic fans are like nothing else. It feels like what has been sort of the reaction from the first one. And also people have already like trickling a few people have had a sneak peek. I love the film sort of the reaction from fans, what it sort of meant to you. You know, anytime people show up for you in this industry, it's, and they blow you away by how much they show up. We're just grateful because these fans are die hard. They grew up with Sonic. They're bringing their kids to Sonic. They're bringing their nieces, their nephews, everybody to Sonic. And we, I'm just blown away and just so grateful to them. And I can't believe it. Yeah, <laughs> it's wild. It's really overwhelming. I think that like, they're very opinionated, for sure. We saw, you know, right before the first one came out, they have thoughts. Um, <laughs> they have notes. They have notes and thoughts. <laughs> but it comes from a place of love. Like, they just, right. they, it's, it's so precious to them. And I think what really is important is that, you know, Jeff is a fan first and wants to protect it for everyone. And uh, just to see their response to the care and, uh, you know, that he's given the film is really beautiful to see. If either of you could choose, I don't know if you're big gamers or not, but if you could choose for Sonic 3, a crossover with Sonic with any video game from oh. ever, what would you choose? Oh my goodness. Maybe Sonic and Zelda? Oh, that would be cool. <laughs> I see, I mean, I feel like Sonic and Yoshi would just like have a good time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they would, I mean, they're too young for brewskis, but they had like, you know, a Sprite and really get a giggle on. Yoshi would be like, please get off my back. Get off my back. It, I think that'd be cute. <laughs> I've discovered the source of ultimate power. Oh! We need to get it back or the world is doomed. You brought some kind of <clears throat> space porcupine. So first of all, you are such a great stone. Thank you. Fans have so embraced you and that relationship between Stone and Robotnik. I saw on your Twitter, there was something about somebody, like fans write, send you homages all the time. There was something mm -hmm. set to Eminem that you retweeted. Can you just talk about what it's meant to you as an actor to have that support and love from the Sonic community? Um, I've been, I just, I constantly am reminded of how fortunate I am. Uh, and I'm so grateful for it. I mean, to see so many fans hop on board and appreciate Stone and show me so much love too, is it's really quite overwhelming in a, in a positive way. You know, yeah. it's, uh, I, think, I think it's a nice reminder of how, how great the world can be and, how, and how, uh, how much love there is in the world. Speaking of love, Jim Carrey, mm -hmm. so amazing. You've now so had two cool. films to develop you know, that relationship, how do you sort of balance that? Cause he's even more maniacal this time around. Mm -hmm. How do you play the perfect sidekick? Like how do you balance the energy and create that for yourself? I think Agent Stone is the grounding element to Dr. Robotnik. So I think with how big Dr. Robotnik can be, I think Agent Stone always brings that like human perspective or audience perspective and grounding element to it. So what I love about Agent Stone too is, is his um, undying support of Robotnik, but also mm -hmm. his judgment at times. Like you'll catch a moment where he'll he'll be like, I don't, I don't know what that was, but okay, let's keep going. Like, you know what I mean? Okay, so. but my favorite element is like the moment that Robotnik walks in to mm -hmm. the mean bean. And the look of love in your eyes, like puppy dog love, where do you put yourself to film those scenes? Is it just like art imitates life, like complete adoration for Jim Carrey? Or how do you sort of, where do you put your head? Oh, I mean, there's definitely a little bit of that for sure, right? <laughs> like, I think it's, it's, it's not the hardest to kind of, you know, realize the situation that I as an actor am in and how incredible it is and like in my wildest dreams you know, wouldn't have come true. And, um, but it's also, I mean, it's agent stone is, is really fun to play and is quite easy to put yourself in a place of, um, such positivity. I think agent stone is like such a positive type of character, which we're not used to seeing in, in right. a quote unquote villain type role. 
Nailed it. That's exactly mm -hmm. what it is. So I'm going to ask everybody today. There are, I've counted eight duos, like different okay. combinations of duos in this film. Who is the best duo in your opinion? In the movie? Decide? Yes. Okay. Selfishly, I got to go Stone and Robotnik. Okay. Okay. Uh, That's fair. As a, as a fan, uh, I, oh man, I do really love the um, the dynamic between Sonic and Tails and getting getting to see that for the first time on the big screen live action as a fan it's it's so good and then you add the the knuckles element as like a you know that power coming in and Idris and and knuckles just like that he's so good he's so, so good, good. Speaking knuckles of personality in this is so great I was laughing so hard so good. I loved the scene where you have the handshake. And I mean, you, you have to do a lot of, you know, the tennis ball acting in that. Yeah. We're sort to of talk about like the physical comedy and how did you sort of achieve that moment? Like, what are you actually holding on? Are you holding on to anything when you're doing like the fake handshake? Or are you just putting your hand out or how does it work? Yeah. So, so basically it was, we had a kind of life size model there. Uh, and I think we did one take with the life size model to just get an idea of where eye lines and my hand would go and everything, and then uh, remove the model. And then it was kind of just remembering over and over roughly where uh, where my hand would be, the height, and then just you know imagine, use your imagination, go back to the child days, wild imagination. And uh, I think we did a bunch of different takes of like how to, what kind of. Like, is it going to look like this? Is it going to look like squeak? It was, I, I think we did like 12 takes of different kind of hand crushing gestures. I understand because I did a beer commercial once and holding the fake beer because the beer had to fly at me. I couldn't get it oh right. I, almost, I thought I was going to get fired off of it. So you nailed you gotta it. Do, you you got to do that thing too, where you, where you, your <laughs> hand has to react to nothing, right? Totally. Totally. Um, okay. So the mean bean is the best name for a coffee shop. So perfect. I want to open a coffee shop called the Mean Bean. I'm going to steal it. It's so what good. Is, did you do any sort of, maybe you did some research into the per, being the perfect barista and sort of like, what's the key to the perfect coffee? Well, I think, I think the key to the perfect coffee is love for sure. Okay. Know, know who you're making it for, know what they like and what they don't like. Uh, and, and I think uh, also, um, I don't know. I lost, I lost my train of thought there. I think it's love. I think it's love. I think I, I think answer. I crushed it on the first one. I was like, you I'm going to give them three. And then I gave you two. And I was like, <laughs> uh, third one's not an option, I guess. There we go. Listen, you're making it with love. It can't take that. It it's can't love. be a bad bean. <laughs> it's love. Know who you're making it for and love. There you go. That's why, I, that's why I lost it. Drop the mic on that one. Yeah. Um, so Robotnik has a very fabulous mustache in this yes, film that yes. even gets its own slow-mo. He's embracing <laughs> that. You've got it going on, but you get the full beard. Right. What is the key to the perfect beard? And why is that the perfect balance to the mustache? Well, I think it's, uh, it's classy. You know, okay. you've got, again, again, it's that element of Robotnik is big. And then Stone brings it down to some groundedness. So we have a nice tidy beard versus the big wild mustache. Uh, and I think the key to a good beard is shape. You got to have yeah. those nice sliced edges. Oh yeah. And you yeah. totally did in the film. Um, right. What Easter eggs are you excited? If you could maybe name one or two that you're excited oh, for man. fans to see in this one, because this movie to me feels like a video game. Like it really feels yeah. like the video game, whether or not you even know the video game, you can tell, right? Yeah. Like they've, up the stakes in terms of that. Well, 100%, uh, I think is a great homage and has so many nods to the video games. Um, oh man, I can't, I can't specifically say a single Easter egg without feeling like I'm gonna ruin something. What I will say is there's plenty and I think all the fans are gonna love it. 